question 13.5, again, this is a titration problem. You are given here a 0.21 to 1 grams of your sodium oxalate. So that is our analyte. And it requires 43.31 ml of potassium permanganate. Such a way that there will be a complete reaction. In this case, this is a redox reaction. Now, the question here is what is the molar concentration of permanganate? The reaction is given. This is a redox reaction. So, this is ionic reaction. Reaction between uh, potassium permanganate in ionic form and sodium oxalate in ionic form. Then, it will produce the manganese ion and carbon dioxide. And from our gen chem, you know already how to balance a redox reaction. But in this problem, the re reaction is given. So, the titrant is potassium permanganate. Take note that the color of potassium permanganate is purple. And uh, it needs 43.31 ml of potassium permanganate to completely react with this amount of oxalate. 0.21 to 1 gram sodium oxalate. Now, take note that oxalate here is solid. So, if you're going to do titration, this will be dissolved in a certain amount of water. Then you do the titration. And you will notice that there is no, there is no indicator that is given. Unlike in 13.4, that there is an indicator. In this case, there is no indicator because uh, permanganate here is purple in color. So, same thing, the end point here is a very light pink. So, if the reaction is not yet completed, the color of permanganate, once it is in the solution of sodium oxalate, it will just disappear. And you will know that it is the end point because a very light pink will retain in the flask that is the color of permanganate. Okay, so that's the end point. Now, the required here is a concentration of permanganate. So again, so usually if you have concentration, you are given here the mass, so you would uh, prefer to solve the concentration in terms of molarity. So again, we know that molarity is equal to moles of the solute, in this case that is potassium permanganate, PMNO4, over the over the volume of the permanganate that is used in the titration to completely react with 0.21 to 1 grams of sodium oxalate. So that is 43.31 ml. So if you are going to use small, so we have the volume in liters. So that is 0 0.04331 liters of the solution of potassium permanganate. Okay, so this will be our working equation. So our target is to determine the number of moles of potassium permanganate. That's our aim. So once we have the moles of potassium permanganate, we the volume is given, then we will be able to determine the concentration of permanganate. So we are going to solve the number of moles of permanganate based on the other reactant, which is sodium oxalate. So the given in sodium oxalate is in grams. So we are going to get the number of moles of that one so that we would be able to use the equation. So moles of sodium oxalate will be equal to from the amount given in grams, 0.21 to 1 grams, use the molar mass of of the sodium oxalate which is given as 134 so you have one mole of one mole of sodium oxalate is equivalent to 134 grams so you can cancel out the gram unit so the number of moles of sodium oxalate is 0.2121 divided by 134 so that is 1.583, That is times 10 to the negative 3 moles of sodium oxalate. 
So once we have the number of moles of sodium oxalate, then we would be able to determine the number of moles of permanganate. Okay, stoichiometric, again, stoichiometry, use the stoichiometric relationship. So I'll have it directly here. So moles of potassium permanganate, KMNO4, will be equal to, from here, from the number of moles of sodium oxalate, 1.5828 times 10 to the negative 3. This is moles of sodium oxalate. Now take note that the reaction given here is ionic reaction and this one is not, this is a compound. So you get the moles of oxalate that is found in a mole of sodium oxalate. So if you have one mole of sodium oxalate, how many moles of oxalate ion is found? So there is only one. So you have one mole of oxalate ion that is negative two. So you can cancel out the moles of sodium oxalate. So you would be able to use now the equation given. So from here, determine the number of moles of permanganate. So the relationship between the relationship between permanganate and oxalate is 2 is to 5. 2 moles of permanganate is equivalent to 5 moles of oxalate. So this will be multiplied now with the stoichiometric relationship. So you will have 2 moles of permanganate, that is MnO4, negative 1, for every 5 moles of oxalate C2O4 negative 2. So you can cancel out this one, cancel out the moles of oxalate. So you have now the moles of permanganate. But we need to know the moles of potassium permanganate. Since this is an ion, so you have to change it to the compound potassium permanganate. So if you have one mole, this is the compound, one mole of potassium permanganate how many moles of manganate ion is present in one mole of potassium permanganate there is only one so you have one mole of uh, manganate ion negative one so you can cancel out this one cancel out this one so the unit that remains is the moles of potassium permanganate so you can solve it here uh, 1.528 times 2 only, that's everything is 1 times 2 divided by 5. That is 6.331. Let me check. 1.5828 exponent negative 3 times 2 divided by 5. 6.3312 times 10 to the negative 4. This is moles of potassium permanganate. Okay? So you have now the number of moles, then you would be able to solve for the concentration from this equation. Or you can actually just uh, equate it here. So moles then or molarity of the concentration of potassium permanganate will be equal to the number of moles, 6.3312 times 10 to the negative 4. This is moles of potassium permanganate divided by the volume, which is in liters, 0 0.04331 in liters. 0.04331. So the answer is 0 0.01462. 0 0.01462 molar of PMN04. So this is the concentration of our uh, titrant, which is 
potassium permanganate. Okay, that is problem 13.